What happens to old tanks? You're about to find out. But first, we're going to need some context. Tanks are an integral part of modern warfare. Having been introduced in World War I as a response to the challenges posed by trench warfare, these heavily armoured tracked vehicles are designed for frontline engagement, providing support to infantry and other ground forces. Over the years, tanks have undergone numerous technological advancements, improving their manoeuvrability, firepower and survivability. However, as these war machines age or become obsolete, their fate often becomes uncertain, raising the question of what happens to old tanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex Garner. If you find this video interesting, please do click the like button down below. So anyway. After World War II, the victorious Allied powers found themselves possessing vast number of surplus tanks. The disposal of these surplus tanks became a big logistical challenge. Many tanks were simply scrapped for their valuable raw materials, such as steel and other metals. The scrap metal from these tanks was then repurposed and supported the post-war rebuilding effort. In some cases, tanks were dumped at sea or buried in large pits, as the cost of scrapping was deemed too high. Some of these tanks still remain underwater or underground as remnants of the war. With the end of the war and the need to rebuild infrastructure, some tanks were converted for civilian use. The tank's powerful engines and heavy-duty tracks made them suitable for construction, agricultural and logging purposes. For example, the tanks were often used to clear land for farming or to pave roads in remote areas. In some cases, the tank body was used as the base for various types of heavy machinery, such as crane and bulldozers. The turrets and weaponry were typically removed and the vehicles would be modified to accommodate the new purpose. Another way that surplus tanks were handled after World War II was through the sale or transfer to other countries. This often occurred through military aid programs, such as the United States Mutual Defense Assistance Program. Under such programs, tanks were provided to friendly nations to help boost their military capabilities and foster diplomatic relations. Many countries acquired these surplus tanks to modernize their own armed forces, as they were relatively cheap and readily available. These tanks were often used in smaller conflicts during the Cold War era, and some even remain in service for decades. A significant number of tanks were preserved as historical artefacts in museums, memorials and other public spaces. These tanks serve as a reminder for the sacrifices made during the war and they help to educate the public about the history and development of armoured warfare. In quite a few cases, tanks have even been restored to full work in order, allowing them to participate in historical reenactments or other events. Like our collection here at Armageddon, we restored the vast majority of these vehicles and take them to a lot of shows such as the Victory Show and Harbour at War. During the Cold War, tanks that were originally developed and used during World War II were still in use by many countries, including the United States and the Soviet Union. These tanks were modified and upgraded to meet the changing needs of modern warfare, but they still retain many of their original features. One of the main uses of World War II tanks during the Cold War was as a deterrent against potential attack. Both the US and Soviet Union maintained large numbers of tanks along their respective borders, with the goal of deterring the other side from attacking. Some of the most commonly used tanks during this period include the M4 Sherman and the T-34, although a lot of new tanks were always being developed as the two countries tried to outdo each other. In addition to their use as a deterrent, World War II tanks were also used in conflicts around the world during the Cold War. For example, the M4 Sherman was used by the US in the Korean War, where it was used to support ground troops and to break through enemy lines. The T-34 was also used by the Soviet Union in the Korean War, as well as in conflicts in Eastern Europe. Many of these tanks were also used in non-combat roles during the Cold War. For example, they were used in training purposes as well as for engineering and construction projects. Some were even used in civil law enforcement, such as during riots and other civil disturbances. Overall, the tanks of World War II played a significant role in the military and political strategies of the Cold War era. They were seen as a symbol of military power and strength, and their presence helped to shape the global balance of power during this period. As you can imagine, a huge amount of tanks are just scrapped when they're deemed unneeded. The scrapping and recycling of tanks is a complex process that involves several steps, including dismantling, decontamination and recycling. The process can vary depending on the type and condition of the tank, as well as the country's regulations and environmental standards. The first step in the scrapping process is dismantling the tank. This involves removing all components from the tank, including the engine, transmission and all other mechanical parts. Any hazardous materials such as fuel and oil are also removed and disposed of properly. After the tank has been dismantled, the next step is decontamination. This involves removing any hazardous materials such as asbestos or lead paint and cleaning the tank to remove any contaminants that may be present. Once the tank has been dismantled and decontaminated, the next step is recycling. Now this next bit is quite interesting. The tank is typically shredded into small pieces, which then can be separated into different metals, such as steel, aluminium and other metals. These materials can then be processed and sold for use in new products. So that can of Coke that you're drinking at one time could have been a Sherman tank. 
In modern day, tanks are often used to support infantry and engage enemy forces at long range. They are also used for reconnaissance and surveillance thanks to their advanced sensors and communication systems. Tanks are also used in peacekeeping operations to provide security and be a deterrent. The most advanced tanks in use today include the Russian T-14 Amata, the American M1A2 Abrams and the Chinese Type 99A. These tanks are equipped with state-of-the-art technology including advanced armour and sensors, high-powered weapon systems and advanced fire control systems. They also have an increased mobility and can operate in a huge amount of environments including urban areas and rough terrain. The future of tanks is focused on increasing automation and unmanned capabilities. Future tanks may have autonomous systems that can operate without human intervention, including advanced sensors that can detect and engage targets on their own. They may also have advanced propulsion systems, including hybrid and electric engines, that increase their speed and mobility while reducing their environmental impact. Finally, future tanks may be equipped with advanced countermeasures that can protect them against enemy weapon systems, including lasers and electromagnetic pulse weapons. It will be very interesting to see what happens once these modern tanks are deemed unneeded and what's going to actually happen to them. Personally, I can't see them being sold to the general public as other ve military vehicles have in the past, mainly because they are far too complicated and way too dangerous to be in the hands of people like me and you. I can imagine they're just going to be mothballed, used as targets, sent to other less developed countries and maybe some will be given to certain national museums. In conclusion, understanding the fate of old tanks sheds light on the broader implications of military decisions, resource allocations and the environmental impact of decommissioning war machines. After World War II, the disposal of surplus tanks became a significant logistical challenge with varying methods employed including preservation, repurposing and recycling. Tanks were scrapped for valuable raw materials, converted for civilian use, sold to other countries or preserved as historical artefacts. During the Cold War, tanks originally developed and used during World War II were still in use, modified and upgraded to meet the ever-changing needs of modern warfare. The different paths that old tanks have taken have ensured that they continue to have a lasting impact and serve as a testament to human integrity and resilience. It is important to understand what happens to old tanks and their impact on history and society to appreciate the role they have played in shaping the world as we live in today. Thank you for watching this video on the fate of old tanks. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope you've learned something. If you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Fly. Okay, fly. The first